hello friends i am very glad that you could make it once again here in today's discussion we're going to take a look into one very popular tool called microsoft teams of course this is not a paid promotion so please expect a very honest review about the tool and i'll also take you through some of the very useful features in teams now this tool once again is getting a lot of popularity nowadays in the market the primary reason for that it's so user friendly and there are a lot of collaboration what you can do inside that so uh, before we start the actual demonstration of the tool please don't forget to like and subscribe to this let's take a look into what all we can do it to in teams so in microsoft teams as you can see now once you log in you have to come to this option called teams and in teams you'll have all your classes which are been assigned to you now i have already created a class which is for the demonstration purpose and if you don't know how to create a team or a class uh, please watch out my other videos so as i have created this demo class let us go inside that and let's see what all different features you can have inside this now right now we are into one team which is called demo class so all your participants will be enrolled for that if you wanted to manage your team as a teacher you can click on this three dots and go to manage teams if you wanted to add some members students or your co trainer you can go inside that if you wanted to edit some information about that you can go inside to this and at a situation where you have to share the complete link for your class history or whatever you are doing in the class you can click on this option get a link to team and you can share with somebody who are not part of this group now right now on the top header of every team you will be by default getting something called post i'll be taking through all these options one by one but just to overview now i have something called post then i have something called files i have something called class notebook i have something called assignments and then finally post assignments the grades now if i wanted to add some more advanced tools where i wanted to demonstrate a workflow for a student or i wanted to have a group based assignment i can add on this add button and add a wide variety of tools which can be available for all of your students now the first option coming to post let's see or let's understand what are the two things i can actually do here the first option on the bottom of the screen you will be finding something which is called start a conversation type at the rate to mention someone now at this place i can have two kind of informations available the first one will be called as announcement and the second one will be called as conversation the announcements are more of a circular or notice kind of a thing where you wanted to have everybody have a look into what is the task or what you are announcing for them conversely in case of conversations you can start a open ended questions or students can directly interact with you in this forum so you will get all the questions at the same point of time and you can also have a good discussion intrigued among the students so those are the options so how do i get those so bottom of the screen once again after the writing area you will have one option called format once i click on this format button one text writing area will pop out and here i can have my details so by default it will be in the conversation mode if i wanted to get it changed to a announcement mode i suppose to click on this drop down list and i should select announcement so now you can see the look and feel of this particular entity got changed so now let me type a headline and let us get see so i can say welcome to this class i can write anything for a matter of fact and then i can have a subtitle added here where i can have multiple subtitles rather but here i am going to add one subtitle because that is not difficult so let me first add one subtitle here where i'll be writing the students before coming to the class 
should should finish these activities and then that will be on for every class now if i wanted to add a little banner or little color for that i can as well do that if i wanted to change the font styling all these styling options are here now after coming to this i'm going to add a bulleted list where i want the participants to do something before they join the class so i'm going to say read unit 1 notes solve at least three questions and i can also say watch the tutorial videos i can also say uh, just to intrigue a little of flipped learning i can also say them be ready for the questions or get ready with the questions whatever it is so now once that has been done i can click on this arrow here which is called send and i can post this to the entire class conversely if i also wish to mention some specific students for that uh, if this is only for the crs or somebody i can hit the at the red symbol here the at symbol and then I'll be able to have the complete list of students available here. As this class has no students or learners enrolled for it, I don't have the names, but otherwise I'll be having all the names mentioned here. Right. Now let me post this and see how does that look like. So that will be a, a very unique style. The students will be able to see what time you posted this and who are you actually, and the complete content will be available. Now this reply button is only applicable for the teachers the students will not be able to directly reply for it however they will be getting all these emojis to a vote or love or make a smile to the statement now once again at this point in time you will be getting uh, on top of this announcement icon you will if you roll over to that you will be able to get a three dots which will help us to edit the content once it's posted uh, i can share it to outlook or i can have uh, generate the notification for all the students or if some of the students are or some of the faculties other faculties are trying to respond to that i can also have this options generated for this so this is the first part where we create a announcement now let's take a look once again same from the format how you supposed to create a conversation so in conversation as you see there is no fancy header or uh, in a matter of fact color options here you can simply write down a text the following students are benefited by I'm sorry benefited by learning fast and then here you can write down something saying, I really appreciate. And then you can keep on mentioning their names once again with the symbol of at or at the right. And then you can post this one once again. So I'm just putting a couple of dots here so that it looks up. All right. So the next option comes here, which is called files. And under files, the popular options what you're supposed to get are new to create a new document, upload to upload an existing document. And for uploaded document, you can actually go ahead, create a shareable link and share the link once again in the post. So those options are available. By default, whatever content you upload here, that going to be visible to the students. And you might have to tweak a uh, permission here and there a little bit. So now let's see what does it takes. So once again, I'm going to go to the new option and I'm going to see I can create a folder and I can create all most of the shareable format of content writing. So first thing first, I'm going to create a folder and I'm going to name it to unit one and I'm going to say create. Now in this particular unit one, once I go inside that, 
I can either create a new content, any of this format, or I can upload a content. Now, once again, coming back to this general, if I click on this, I'll be able to see all these folders once again, one by one, and I can have as many as folder created for this purpose. Right. Now, by default, there are going to be a folder which is called class materials. This is shareable, and whatever you create outside this folder, class materials, those will not be shared with the participants by default. Right. So there will be a couple of folders which you always wanted to access very quick before everything. So you can actually select that particular one and then you can say uh, pin to top or something like that, as you mentioned here. If you wanted to rename something or download your uploaded content one second, you can click on download or rename based on your needs. Right. So this is uh, straightforward where you can share your contents and you can share multiple files. Now let me take you through one more very exciting feature, which is called class notebook. This class notebook is really interesting and you can actually do a lot more things about that. While I talk about a couple of features, let me click on set up a OneNote class book so that it gets created the time we finish the discussion. So I'm gonna create a blank notebook. So I clicked on set up a, a OneNote class notebook and I'm clicking on blank notebook. All right, so my blank notebook, whatever permissions are here, everything is given. I don't have to bother much about that. I click on next. That's going to be all. Now here, if I wanted to have multiple sections like handouts, class notes, homework, quizzes, and I can rename this section, edit this section, I can have a new section added to that. So these all will be segregated like a multi-group notebook. The advantage is for every student, this same art structure will be replicated where the students can come forward, have their own details, and if they wish, they can share with the other participants or they can only share with you. So let's get this created. Now, the moment this class notebook is created, the first thing first, you should, shall be able to post multiple contents in that. You'll be also able to uh, see what students are writing in their notebooks and also if you wanted to have a collaboration between multiple students like a group assignment or a group study or case based something you can also do that right so now notebook is now created i can call it a demo notebook we have to be a little careful about the structures or what we post here because this is not really deletable or replaceable and then I can have a lot of contents noted down here. Now, uh, I can insert a text, I can draw something, I can have a different viewing layout and everything. I can view this content in a web browser uh, so that it uh, looks like a HTML and much more readable for a student and everything. Uh, there is one more cool feature here, which is called class notebook. So let me click on class notebook and let's see what you have. Now, in the class notebook, you have distribute page, distribute a section. You can copy some content from here and you can store permanently to the course library. And the final option, reviewing course work by the students. Now, first, let us take a very quick look into distribute page. So if I click on distribute page, I can uh, distribute a complete page. I can distribute the page individually with certain student. I can uh, distribute a section with the student or a group of student and those features are available similar to distribute new sections as well now let us take a look into review student work so once i click on review student work i'll be able to see the class notebook and then i'll be able to figure it out select a section to review for a particular student i can click on class notes or I can go to homework and I can click on next. So as of now, there are no pages available because I have not added a page. But if at all I have added and shared with a group of students or an individual student or with the complete class, I'll be able to see what they have actually replied. It can be a tedious process for a, a class size of 60, 65, 70 or so. Uh, but for that, you have one more option, which is called assignments. So let me take you through the next option on the top menu, which is called assignments. And let us see 
what kind of assignments you are supposed to create and how can you get it created. Now, once an assignment, as this is the very first assignment, I'll get this button called get started. So I'll click on get started and I'll click on create to start a quiz or an assignment. So now the moment I click on create, I can choose a assignment or I can create a quiz or I can, if I already have some quiz created, I can replicate the contents from that. Now, first let me start with quiz. So as I go to quiz, I'll be able to my, uh, forward it to Microsoft Forms, where right now I don't have any forms available because this is the first time we are trying to create a form in Microsoft Teams. So we should be clicking on new form. So once I click on this option, new form, I'll be able to get two options here, new form and new quiz. The new form is majorly for survey. However, you have not many other tools to do survey for that. The second option goes as new quiz. So let me click on new quiz and let's see how different this is gonna be from Google Forms or something. So click on new quiz. So once again, I have to start with the name of the quiz. So this is called welcome quiz. And I can enter some description for that. And if I directly wanted to add some questions without entering any description here, I click on the button add new. So there I get primarily four choice, which is a choice with which is MCQ then a short answer, a rating based date. And then if I click on this drop down option, I'll be able to select multiple other types of questions as well. So primitive option, multiple choice, let us start with that. So I click on choice here, multiple choice, and then first I'm writing a question. Secondly, I can come back here and always say a couple of options here. I am having a few options saying option A, I'm calling it option B, and maybe uh, I can add four more, two more options to make it a four. So now these four options are created. Now let's see how do you manipulate or manage this entire content. So now once these options are ready, you have to mark a correct answer so that it can be automatically uh, grade it or you don't have to come back and see each and every response one by another to give them marks. So here is an option. There is a tick mark next to the next to all these options. So if I want option B to be a correct option, so I tick that the moment I click on that, it will be marked as correct answer. And now if I wanted to give a specific feedback about all these options to the students, I can click on this comment option button and I can write down the comments. Now here I can mention how much marks that gonna take. So I can say this will be only for one mark. And if I wanted to have multiple answers for these questions, then I can on that. And then in that case, I have to select two options as a correct answer. Uh, is this a required question? Yes, if I feel this question is a must to attend, then I'll say required and that will be the basic settings of it. Subsequently, you can click on these three dots here and you can say uh, whether to shuffle the options, do I want a branching? Branching means based on the correct answers given, they will be forwarded to a specific question that can be done. Uh, if I wanted to have a mathematical model or a mathematical formula to be added, I can as well do that. I can have some subtitles added for this question saying that if you wanted to uh, learn more about this topic, you can go to this link and study, those options are possible. So once these are options have been done, I can uh, click on share and then this quiz will be shared with everybody. But there are a few more options which are available here. As you can see on these three dots on the right corner, the moment I click on, I'll be getting an option called settings. The moment I click on settings, I'll be able to see multiple other options. The first option says uh, the result should be published automatically. It's your wish, you may or may not. Uh, you wanted to make it available for everybody who are not part of the class, your wish. And uh, for 
how much duration you wanted to have the quiz you can denote that by start and end date you can shuffle the questions you can send a, a notification to the participants after taking the quiz and once the quiz is announced you can shuffle uh, the customize i mean your thank you text by customizing that uh, saying that yes thank you for taking this quiz and something based on that so once this all had been done you can preview this here and then finally you can share the quiz so i'll just click on share and so this is the url it will be done and only people in my organization can respond will significantly be the students are part of your course can only answer that subsequently you can also see anyone with this link can answer as well so as this has been done uh, once i close this and i come back to the uh, assignment option i'll be able to see my first uh, draft assignment is actually uh, the assignments are actually been getting ready once i click on save there it will be appearing here but i have not saved it all right similarly you can create an assignment also which will be primarily a text sharing mode and you can do that and once this assignments are actually graded you can map to something where uh, the complete class progress will be coming here also uh, in the grade you will be able to get uh, assignments which are graded manually and which are graded automatically so both will be part of it also in the assignment segment you can create your own rubric but uh, that i guess will be a point in discussion for a later time so this is all the asynchronous part what you can do now coming to the synchronous live classes let us see what exactly you can do about it so i'll go to a option called calendar on the left hand side of the panel as of now we are in teams and we have managed all this so i'm going to calendar now and let's see what all we can do so this is primarily used for uh, creating a class or creating a live lecture or something on top as you can see there are two option one is called meet now the second one is called new meeting meet now is a instant mode method to go immediately live and take a class or subsequently you can create a or schedule a class as well so once i go to this option i will have a new meeting beside that the drop down arrow the moment i click on that i'll be able to see two options here one is called schedule meeting and the one is called live meeting so for a scheduled meeting uh, it is most authenticated way of doing that so i'll click on schedule meeting and then i can have the title of the meeting so this is nothing but my lecture 1 and i can mention it for the complete class also i can add this one to a channel so that this the students from that particular class supposed to attend and everybody will get a notification so i'm posting it to demo class and then i have a time period decided for that so let me change the time a little bit so that we get to see uh, how this exactly looks like and that's going to be all so and then you can also decide like what is the duration of your class and everything and uh, let's say we are hosting it for 30 minutes also so once this is all been done you want to give a specific instruction to the students you can type out here saying that today we are going to discuss and then you can mention what all few couple of things you wanted to discuss today in the class so that the students come prepared now what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, click on save but before that there is one more option which is called scheduling assistant there uh, you will be able to see how this actually will look like on the scheduling part and before that you can actually also ensure that uh, your class is not coinciding with any of the other classes so that can be done now at the same point in time <clears throat> we can go ahead and say if everything is fine we can click on save and the lecture will be saved so this is the meeting which has been created in the calendar now once i click on this option once again if i wanted to edit something on that i'll be clicking on lecture 1 and there are a few couple of optional fractions which you can also decide uh, you can define uh, whether there will be a waiting room or not whether you wanted to have the participants live coming to live online or not now just to demonstrate that quickly what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to add a email id which is not part of this class and let's see how does that works 
So I am now inviting a student who is not part of this class because that's a different email ID what uh, primarily I use. And then I'm going to say close. So this participants one second will get a notice. Now let me start the meeting. Let me start the class and show you what all cool things you can do in that. So once the recording, uh, the meeting is actually created, we can go ahead and see uh, it's uh, in, on our calendar. The participants also will be able to see that. And once I click on this button join, I'll be mapped to this option now. So here I'll not be using the mic and the cam for the recording purpose. So without these two, I should be joining this meeting, but in a real life scenario, I should be I'm supposed to have these two things on. And then I click on the option join now. So once this has been done, I can uh, share some of the contents on this. I can also uh, see the device settings. I can turn off the captions. I can have a virtual background. I can have these options and I can also record the live class. At the same time, I can also have the participants displayed here. As you can see that there is a participants list and I'll be able to see who all have joined. Now, if at all I wanted to have a permission managed here, I can click on this manage permission. The moment I click on this manage permission button, it will take me online once again, where I can select or customize the option. So this is lobby, something like a waiting room. Uh, who can bypass the lobby? If I say everyone, then the students will directly join into the course. But if I say uh, everyone uh, or people in my organization, then the rest of the student has to wait who are not part of this class. But however, uh, you can decide that one. Right. Okay. So I can click on save on this and I'm going to go back to my option onto my class. So this is my class. Once again, I can have a conversation started. I can also go back to the participants and download the list attendance list from this download button. I can uh, selectively mute or selectively unmute student participants. And if I have a big list available here, you will also be able to see that how do you mute everybody in the meeting. Those options are as well available. Now, there are some couple of options in the share. I can share the screen or I can share a specific content or I can share a specific PowerPoint, uh, those options are available for us. And then I'm going to go to a Microsoft whiteboard. So let's see how does that look like and how can you take effective use of that. And then for that particular purpose, I'm going to use a different device. The advantage of Microsoft Teams is that you can log in from multiple devices here. So I'm using another iPad here to log into that same meeting. And I have joined to that meeting from a different device now. But as you can see, I'm the only one who is in the meeting. So it does not matter how many times or how many devices you are parallelly logging in. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start writing some content here. So I can write down any contents, whatever I want. So I'm going to say this equation must be understood and then I can go ahead and write down my equation and as you can use you can do it with the mouse but having a separate pen or a stylus for our writing devices will definitely make the things much better so you're gonna say I of T is equal to I is equal to 1 to n where a of I which is a time dependent variable to the input so I can write down multiple equations here so those options all are available I can use any of this and then uh, the erase option is once again very very smooth here as you can see on the eraser part the moment I click on this eraser I can go ahead and delete much more content at a same point of time so this is pretty neat and straightforward and very easy to use also if I want to share some other specific content like a screen or an application or something, instead of sharing the complete desktop here, I can share a specific window. So like, as you can see, I have a Zoom window running, I have a Microsoft Teams folder running, 
I have a meeting console running. So any of these applications which are available in your computer, you can also share with that. And then at the end, you can ask multiple questions to the participants. You can go to the conversation option. And there is a menu here, the three dots. The moment you click on here, you can actually have multiple uh, tools for taking a short quiz or a quick vote or something. So Poly is one option where you can take votes or you can conduct open-ended polls. So you can also share content from YouTube. You can also share some content from Wikipedia here for the participants during your learning. So those options are as well possible. Right, so that brings us to the end of this. Uh, let us see what all are the activities going on now. So if I go to this activity option now, so I'll be able to see what all post or what all activities I have done. If I once again go to the teams, I can go to the post, I can see all the activities which are happening now. I can see from the calendar which all classes have been scheduled and which all classes I supposed to take. So this way you can plan the complete week as well. So this technically brings us to the end of this uh, demonstration. I hope this will be helpful for you and I wish every single uh, faculty all the best for the coming upcoming semester. Have a very happy learning entitled. Thank you.